Hi everyone, the Artie Dan's here and welcome back to my channel. I'm trying something a little bit new here. I'm going to do a weekly horror video where I talk about the horror movies that I might have watched during the week and maybe something that I watched previously and maybe just do some mini reviews and give you some more information. Now, hopefully I stick by and actually do this and every now and then I might put a smutty video in there too because I know you guys like that. So, for this video, I'm thinking of looking at four horror movies. I'm going to give you some short reviews and a bit of a synopsis about the movies. Now, they are Asian horror movies, obviously, uh, and um, they're newish. Uh, they're not great, so that's why I want to talk to you about them. I don't think they deserve full video reviews on their own, so maybe this will be a bit more fun. So, the four movies that I'm going to look at are Ruma Kuntilanak from Indonesia, that's from 2022, we're going to look at Late Night Ride from Singapore. That's from 2021. We're going to look at C144 Human Cross Nature from Malaysia. That's from 2022. And we're going to have a bit of a blast from the past. We're going to go back to 2018 and look at a Chinese horror film called Horror Bathroom. That's a pretty action-packed schedule we've got for this video, so let's get started. First up, we're going to have a look at that Indonesian film. So if you're not watching Indonesian horror films, you are missing out. They have made some of the best horror films lately, especially things like Satan Slaves 2, Ivana, The Doll 3, uh, quite a few more, KKN, which, you know, was good. But uh, this one, from the same year as all those films, isn't quite so good. Let's start off with the synopsis, and I'm going to read what I've already written. An annoying pregnant woman travels to a rubber plantation in search of her husband, who conveniently left her a few months prior. She arrives at the location and is offered some strange hospitality, but is told not to enter the main house. She is convinced to stay at the plantation until she gives birth, eventually running into her husband, who then drops the mother of all truth bombs on her. So where do we start with this one? This film was given to me by a friend of the channel who um, has a massive collection of horror films and he likes to just dump stuff uh, for me in a drive and says, hey, just watch these, Dan, and see what you think of them. So this was one of those films. And uh, I can't remember whether he'd watched it before I had, but wow. Um, uh, in my initial writing of this uh, movie, which I never actually made a video about, I said... If this movie doesn't appear on any worst of horror films of 2022 lists, then that just means that the person who made that list wasn't dumb enough to watch this film. And it really is, it really is a shithouse film. So it's it's coupled with some really illogical acting. It's, it's a type of movie where emotions just go from, from low to high ridiculously quick. Uh, and, you know, in the same scene, you can be like, Hi, how are you? I'm going to kill you! You know, that kind of stuff. Mungkin jiwanya nyonyawan sedikit terganggu karena perasaan cintanya yang terlalu dalam. So tau kamu! Pergi kamu dari sini! Tinggalkan tempat ini! Lancang sekali mulutmu! It's like when you're playing a video game and you're going through the voice options, the different uh, choices that you can make, and all of a sudden, one of the options gives you this really out of character, out of emotion character. That's what this does in this film. And there really is absolutely a complete lack of continuity in this film. There's also some really, really shithouse editing and um, some really bad special effects, uh, cheap makeup, uh, and story. And the story and dialogue feels like it was just made up on the spot as you go along. Um, I'm sure they had a script, but I don't think anyone kept to it. <laughs> I think the interesting thing about this film is it is a great example of the difference between really good and really bad Indonesian horror films. And this one is really on the bad scale. When you've got stuff like like Satan Slaves 2 and then to watch this, you just think, holy crap, this is just terrible. And the worst part is that it uses that Kuntilanak name, which means that Anyone who's watched the Kuntinalak movies, and I have, I've, I love the, the first one from 2006 with Julia Stell. You kind of think, oh, maybe this is part of that same universe, but it's not. It's a short movie too, and that doesn't even do it any justice 
at all. It's just, you know, by the time the movie ends, you just think, oh my God, how does a movie like this get made? Can you just walk into the offices of an Indonesian film producer and go, I've got an idea, annoying pregnant woman, rubber plantation, missing husband, and they just give you money? Because that's exactly what it seems like here. And then it has a really dumb ending that you just kind of think, you know what, lady, you deserve it. And and in fact, everyone in this movie deserves it. So, yeah. Uh, I know I've been uh, giving horror movies um, something called my ghost rating. Whoops, don't bump the camera there. Uh, something called the ghost rating, which stands for great horror and stupid tr- or stupid trash. And uh, for this one, for this film, it is definitely a one ghost film. Actually, I'm reading my original script that I wrote for this film. And I said, and I quote, I'm not even going to award this a ghost. I promised when I created this rating that every film would get a minimum of one ghost, but this movie breaks that rule. So that's how terrible it is. If you like bad horror movies, there's only one other movie I could think of that could be worse than this. And it's the third movie I'm going to be talking about in this video. So that was Ruma Kontinlanak from Indonesia. Okay, going from crap to pretty good, well, actually not pretty good, but good, good enough, is this one from 2001 from Singapore. Now, this one's called Late Night Ride. Now, let me read you the synopsis. A new park opens in Singapore, but rumor has it that it's built over the graves of long dead souls, resulting in the road being haunted. A group of YouTubing ghost hunters decides to investigate, but after splitting from the pack, one of them is struck and killed by a passing car, which changes the lives of the two unrelated groups of people. One of them is a single father struggling to connect with his son after the death of his wife, and another is a taxi driver who seems to be stuck in a rut of very bad luck. So where do I start with this one? Uh, Pretty girls. A couple of really pretty girls in this film, and that's obviously designed to get people like me to go, ooh, I'm going to watch this. And, you know, pretty girls coupled with the whole YouTubing thing, coupled with the whole we're ghost hunting thing, you just think, nah, yeah, there's maybe some potential with this film. And there is. Very little bit, but there is. Interesting about Singaporean horror films is they're mostly about ghosts, spirits, urban legends. And, and this film does continue that tradition. Uh, and in fact, the all the Singaporean horror films that I've seen seem to be about urban legends. So this one definitely fits that mold. What I find really interesting about this film is that just like in Hong Kong, when you've got a very small budget, you get relegated to shooting in the middle of the night. And this film is definitely shot, you know, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. So they've had to build a whole plot around that, um, just based on the fact that they couldn't get permits to shoot during the day. And in, in Singapore, I can imagine it'd be ridiculously expensive. Hong Kong. Charlene! Wait, Alex! Charlene, stop hiding! Wait! So I mentioned that the movie uh, likes to give us three girls, pretty girls. And and the distracting part about them is the rather large chests on all three of them. And I'm pretty sure that's deliberate. Like you don't go in to make a movie like this without thinking, oh, these girls have big boobs. What We're just going to show them. So clearly that's what they've done here. And the first 20 minutes of this film actually has some pretty creepy kind of scares you know it sets up a kind of good atmosphere for the movie definitely not right and i am gonna get to the bottom of it but then it turns into a mystery film uh which then starts to feel very chinese horror uh where you know that there's not going to be a really good payoff and that there's going to be some kind of whodunit mystery and that's when we're introduced to that taxi character and then we're introduced to the father and then that car accident that really takes a long time during the film before you can you kind of find out what the car accident is about and how everyone kind of connects together. Another bit that I find really hilarious about it being shot in the night is the fact that there is absolutely nobody in the car park or nobody in the streets. Now, anyone who's been to Singapore, I've, I've been one twice uh, to Singapore there's people everywhere. And if you're from Singapore watching this, you'll, you'll understand that too. There are just people everywhere. And to have a movie like this, okay, shot at nighttime. So I don't remember walking around Singapore at two or three, four o'clock in the morning, but there's just no one around. Absolutely no one around, which means that there's really kind of no extras. And that then means that there's no atmosphere in the movie. 
it's very bland, very kind of dry scenes. Just our three main girls with the big boobies or our taxi driver and her couple of friends or the father and uh, it's a daughter, son. It's been a couple months since I've seen the film. So I know I'm calling it this video this week in horror, but in reality, I saw this movie a few months ago. Uh, and so that kind of takes away a little bit of what you expect from some kind of atmosphere. There kind of is none. Interesting, though, is that maybe taking a step out of Chinese horror films, that it kind of pushes a little bit of a social message about cleaning up the park and about being polite uh, and social responsibility. So uh, I'm not sure how many people that the movie is aimed at is going to pay attention to that particular bit, but hey, it's there. Uh, good on you, Singaporean filmmakers, for throwing that in. Um, one thing I did kind of note was that it doesn't kind of show off the humidity of Singapore. And just looking at me now, you can kind of see I'm, I'm kind of sweating because it's been a hot day here uh, where I'm from and I am, uh, you know, sweating. And that's kind of what it's like in Singapore. And that doesn't come across in this movie at all. But then again, if you live in Singapore, you're probably really bloody used to it. Now, again, using my patent pending ghost rating, great horror or stupid trash, I'm going to give this film two ghosts. Now, I initially said that it probably feels more like a two and a half ghost film, but I don't award half ghosts uh, for these horror films. So it's a two ghost film. Um, it's not bad. It's just not a proper horror film. It turns into that mystery thing. So if you're really wanting a Singaporean horror film, uh, this could be as good as it gets. Uh, and that's not saying much. So that's Late Night Ride 2021 from Singapore. Third up on this list is a film from Malaysia from 2022 called C144 Human Cross Nature. I think. Let me check that. Yes, that's what it's called. Um, this was a candidate for the absolute worst horror film ever from Asia. And I wish I was joking. And I've seen a lot of bad Asian horror films. I've seen a lot of Chinese horror films. So obviously I've seen a lot of bad ones. This is shit house, Really shit house. Now, I'm going to try and remember off the top of my head what the plot is about. I only watched it about four hours ago. So it should still be fresh in my head. But this 90-minute movie took me three hours to get through. So perhaps the memory of it might not be that great. So what we've got is a guy called Jason and he is very much in debt and he likes to think that he is some kind of professional camper. And alongside his friend Kuma, they discover that there is a a, uh, a wreckage of a Japanese airplane from World War II. And they decide that in order to make some quick money, they're going to arrange a tour of that particular wreckage. Now they they sell tickets or sell whatever they're doing to about uh, eight or 10 other people. And that includes this really gruff English guy, this uh, Singaporean photographer, two Thai influencers who are quite attractive, obviously. Uh, we've got two Malaysian Chinese couple, uh, a Malaysian Chinese couple, um, who that's her birthday. We've got a Malaysian uh, nurse. And we've got this Malaysian guy called Yoga, that, and he's the chef, apparently, the chef. Uh, and that, and there's a couple of other characters as well, but they're so uh, boring. Uh, there's an Indian um, journalist who's there to kind of write an article about it. And they have a tour guide who then decides to ditch him before they get to their location. So essentially, they're going into the forest to find this wreckage. Now, Yoga, one of the guys, the, the chef... Tells everyone, you know, it's the forest, have some respect, don't touch things, don't say each other's names at night. Going through all this kind of urban legend uh, bullshit that uh, that the film's about. And and that's it. Like They get to the wreckage. I don't want to spoil the film, but it's pretty shit house. And it is pretty shit house. And that's the problem with the film. It's, it's just like the first film. There is no continuity and emotion range for our actors. So again, it's like all of a sudden, hey, how are you going? No, fuck you. You know, it's that kind of thing. And all of a sudden, you just get wild emotions coming out of people. And you just think as the director, what the fuck were you doing? Bro, I think we should just cancel this trip. Just shut up and follow. I don't need you to question me anymore, okay? Let's go. 
how do you not direct this scene properly where you're telling people, all right, now th hold your emotions, this, this, and this, then boom, snap at this character. But the way that they just snap at each other, it reminded me of one of those American teen horror movies where all the characters are really awful. And that was this, that all the characters were awful. You're not rooting for any of the characters. You're not thinking, yes, I want that particular person to survive. You actually are thinking, kill them all off because they're all fucking horrible. And that's what you get with this film. Supposedly, it is based on a true story and a true story of the wreckage. Uh, and at the end of the film, there's this kind of interview with the person who found the wreckage. And uh, he explains a little bit about what the wreckage was. But And then they've just constructed this whole fake movie, this whole fake scenario, this whole bullshit scenario around the concept of the film. The film, I think it does have a couple of redeeming features. It's got some fairly decent makeup effects and they... They come across really well. Uh, some of the ghosts or the djinns, they look okay, especially the the main female djinn looks pretty good. Um, but everything else is a pure disaster. The acting isn't good at all. The, it, it's dubbed over, a lot of the characters are dubbed over into English. And so you get that awful thing where the mouths are moving, but different things are coming out of it, which I don't expect from Malaysia at all. That's really unexpected from Malaysia. You do, you do get the cool accents from Malaysia, and I love Malaysian accents. I think it's great to listen to them speaking English. Um, and, and so you do get that here. But you, you just don't get characters that you can connect to and that you think are likable. And, and, that become, and that's because of the way that they are directed in the film and the emotional range that they go through. Uh, the jungle scenes look great. And there's a scene towards the end of the film where they meet up with this, uh, this doctor or scientist who's investigating the local village there and their customs and rituals. And that those customs and rituals go there to explain all of the stuff that kind of happens in the movie. But it takes too long to get to that bit. And there's this really awkward bit of dialogue where he's talking to this the, the Indian journalist and, and it's like, oh, you're doing this here. Oh, what do you think? And it's just like, who gives a fuck what anyone thinks? Like, just talk about, talk about the discoveries that you're going through and then let's move on to the next scene. Um, a lot of the film just doesn't feel thought through. It's a movie about people going camping and they've got a chef. And I'm not sure why they've got a chef because that doesn't make any sense. There's a scene where you can see the food they've got and it's just packets of migoring. So I don't really think you need a chef to boil water and cook up noodles. Uh, the nurse character, I thought would actually play an important part of the film. Like, you know, if someone gets injured, she's going to do something. She... I don't recall her actually attending to, other than the, the Chinese girl, I don't actually recall her attending to any other person who gets injured throughout the film. And then you get these the, the two Thai girls who are just really annoying. And you just wonder, why would those two characters want to go on this camping tour? They explain that they're influencers and they're doing it for photos and likes, but bullshit. Seriously, they're, they're not going to do stuff like this. So... You know, an excuse to put a couple of pretty girls in the film. That was all that was. This movie, C144, um, it, again, like Ruma Kunti Lanak, has to go on any worst of horror films of 2022 list. This one is pure shithouse. There is nothing exciting to watch about this film. It's the bland acting, the bland scenes. Everything is just bland and horrible. The only part that you might even enjoy uh, could be just the end where the, the producer tries to explain what the hell the movie was about and what they based the movie on. But really, avoid this one like the plague. And I think it's pretty easy to avoid like the plague because I think it's pretty difficult to find. So that is C144, Human Cross Nature from Malaysia, 2022. Now, I've got one more I'd like to talk about. And that is an old film, old 2018 from China called Horror Bathrooms. First, let's check out the trailer. Uh, 
挥霍无度，赚点破钱就四处显摆。你对我造成的伤害，一辈子都弥补不了。我感觉这真的有鬼，我被鬼缠身了吧？我不允许你这么做！我已经长大了，不用什么事情都要你来管So, typical Chinese trailer. Nothing too exciting other than, you know, the fake screams and the fake horror and, oh my God, could this be a good film? No, it's not. Now, I want you to have a look at the poster for this film and tell me what you think the angle was that they were going with this. Yeah. None of that happens in the film at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the translated synopsis of the film. So I didn't write this, uh, the Chinese wrote this, and I just hit the translate button on Google, and we're gonna, we're gonna read it together, the hilarity of this synopsis of this film. So let's have a look at it. Tzu Mao, a girl from a wealthy family, was attacked by a water ghost in the bathroom, panicked and exhausted. From time to time, strange shadows drifted across the villa, disturbing voices come from the village, from the window lattice, and the bathroom became a place where family members stayed away. Is the soul of the mother's suicide returning to cause trouble, or is the father repentant psychologically leading to perverted behavior, or is it just a dream? After many investigations by many people, all of this is actually related to the former cronies of the beautiful girl's father. Is it the revenge of the dead or the curse of the living? Amongst the screams, the mystery of the bathroom awaits the ultimate answer. The fuck? Really? What I remember watching about this film was the main character, the girl in it. She is really wild. In one scene, she'll be dressed up with colored hair and nose rings and punky clothes. And in the next scene, she looks normal. And... I just thought, well, you know, identity crisis, teenager, yeah, kind of the same shit. Um, but, you know, you see this stuff on the poster and none of that actually comes and happens in the film. Uh, you know, there's a couple of scenes of her in a pool where you think, oh, yeah, there's going to be some cool, scary ghost bits. But really, in the end, nothing kind of happens. And remember, this is a Chinese horror film and they uh, they only have a couple of ways that they can end this film. There's a character in this film, if I remember correctly, the father's girlfriend, uh, who seems to be some kind of psychologist. And she is seeming to be implanting some kind of memory into the girl to make her think that she's crazy or not crazy. And then you get the reveal. And you know what? It's a really bad film. But it's part of that 2018 Chinese horror phase where the Chinese were actually trying to make some pretty decent films. Um, and they were trying a lot of different things with their horror films, but this one just falls completely flat. Worth watching only for the pretty girl, but that's about it. And of course, the bar, uh, the uh, the poster, the poster is pretty cool, but the movie itself is just really shit. Now, why didn't I cover this on my worst of Chinese horror movie series? I kind of don't remember why I didn't look at it before. Uh, it's just one of those movies I was just watching at the time, and you know, after you watch so many of these damn Chinese horror films, you just think. Enough's enough. I can't do this anymore. And so that's why I moved to Indonesian horror films. And Jesus, I'm getting about this close to saying, Jesus, enough's enough with these Indonesian horror films. But there are at least good Indonesian horror films like Satan Slaves too. So anyway, that was my wrap up of this week in horror movies that I watched. Now, I'm going to hopefully do uh, more of these videos in the future. Um, leave me some comments. If you've seen any of the four movies that I've talked about in this video, Leave a comment to tell me what you thought of them, if you thought they were just as shit ass as I thought, or if you thought they were good. Uh, if you want to watch them, I may be able to tell you where you can get them from. Um, no promises there. Uh, if you have recommendations for me to watch, 
I love getting recommendations. So throw them in the comments section and tell me why you think I should watch it. Otherwise, I'm the Artie Dance. Thank you for being subscribed to my channel. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for joining me on my journey of crazy horror films and smutty horror films and just smutty films in general and horror films in general. Um, you know, there's a lot of options on YouTube and I'm glad that you've stuck around to my channel and just helped me out a little bit. And I appreciate that. So let's hope that we can grow this channel a bit more in 2023. And I hope that you stick around. So maybe like it, maybe subscribe it. Don't all YouTubers say that. Uh, and if not, doesn't matter. Maybe I'll get you on the next video, but hopefully you do subscribe and I will catch you next time. Thank you, everyone.